Welcome back to Take Us McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. I'm Barbara McGinnis and today we're exploring again the many issues related to aging, chronic conditions, disability, and unexpected illness. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the business of dying, often uncomfortable, but always information that we need to know. And I'm Tim Takus. After someone dies, there are decisions that need to be made about how to celebrate this person's life. Will there be a funeral? Does this person want to be cremated or buried? Uh, a traditional grave? Or does the person want something else? So there are, a lot of, there are many logistical questions about what happens when someone dies. So with us today is John Smith, who is the owner of Smith Family Funeral and Cremation Services in Murfreesboro. Uh, for some answers to these maybe sometimes uncomfortable questions. Sure. So welcome, John. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for being me. here. Mm -hmm. So what are the benefits of pre-planning your funeral? Well, uh, probably too numerous to explain on this television show, but, but probably some of the most obvious uh, answers would be uh, probably peace of mind would be the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just knowing that uh, when the day does come, which it's going to come for all of us, uh -huh. uh, that the plans have already been made. And hopefully beyond planning that the arrangements is, have also been taken care of. That, that would probably be the first, mm -hmm. uh, first answer. The second would be uh, for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some things, uh, there are contracts like guaranteed and non-guaranteed contracts, but uh, there can be a financial savings as well. Mm -hmm. uh, locking in today's pricing of, of goods and services so mm -hmm. there can be a financial benefit to it but also too it can prevent any emotional overspending we've all heard of that where we're in the, in the, mm -hmm. the heat of grief uh -huh. uh, and in right. the overthrows of grief and we may overspend yeah, our right. budget yeah like daddy always wanted an eternal flame and that's so right that's like that could be kind of costly that's probably. right yes. that's right mm -hmm. so those are just a couple of the many uh, that are there but also you know the person that uh, is pre-planning their funeral or their uh, cremation or pre-arranging um, they get to have some say in it mm -hmm. so it tells the family this is what mom or dad wanted or mm -hmm. uh, there's no it takes some of the guesswork out of it and mitigates some of the complications that arise from grief you know with the family right. so right. Mm -hmm. is there any downside any cons to planning ahead you know I haven't I haven't come across anybody at this point in my uh, career that said geez I wish I hadn't a pre plan right <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. you know yeah, you really see the benefits of it for That's people right. that are in that moment and they wanting to know what to ha what to do. And, That's right. And it's like, no, your mom and dad have already they've already got this planned out. That's Great. right. Yeah, I, kn I know. My parents pre-planned. My my mom's still alive, but my dad passed, and it, it made it easier for both of us. You know, yes. for her and for my, for me. And it was like uh, it was one less thing to worry about. And you, you got a lot of stuff on your mind at that point in time. So that's I, right. I, I think. I appreciated it. When you plan for a funeral in advance, how does it get paid for? Like, well, that can be uh, several different ways that it can be paid for. Uh, if you're pre-planning, uh, there's insurance that can be taken out. Uh, it could go on to a payment plan if they meet the medical criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, somebody could quite feasibly go into a payment plan and they mm -hmm. get to select the number of years uh, upwards to about 10 years for an insurance uh, plan or it can be done in a single premium where they pay for it right up front mm -hmm. uh, and they take care of that plan that way or they can do what's called a dollar for dollar where as they pay the value of that policy is what they've paid into it okay so uh, it's really about a life like a life insurance policy that w it, it when the person dies then the beneficiary would be the funeral home uh, well the beneficiary would be somebody that the the uh, uh, person that wrote the policy, a funeral director or pre-planning specialist, would make a beneficiary, a family member the beneficiary, uh, typically. Right. Um, but also, uh, that policy won't get paid out until the person passes away, and then of course it does get paid to the funeral home. So yes, in a way, I guess that would be the We're funeral home is the, is the beneficiary right. of the funeral amount. Mm -hmm. hmm. So is that what we mean when we say we're assigning a policy to the funeral home? Is that yeah. what we're doing? Well, if it's a pre-need funeral type of contract, okay. yes, that, that is uh, those those monies are coming to the funeral home. It was written on their contract or on their general price list based on their prices. So when that person does pass away, those monies are then distributed to that funeral home. 
uh, that it was written under, or it can be another funeral home serving that family okay. using that policy. Okay, so we have clients that come down from Michigan yes. or whatever it is, and they bought a policy or they have a contract with a comp you know somebody up there. So yes. how does that work? Well, they've written their contract on the on the uh, price list at that funeral home, let's say up in Michigan, uh, and they've passed away here. Now they're hoping to find a funeral home that would honor that contract. Uh, is a funeral home outside of that? original funeral home obligated they are not however uh, as a professional courtesy generally in general most mm -hmm. funeral homes it doesn't take much effort for the family a few calls and they can generally find a funeral home that would be willing to honor that contract right. at our family firm we honor just about all contracts uh, to make sure that the family's wishes are fulfilled mm -hmm. uh, with the exception of a few small things most contracts we would honor I see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so what if a person dies and they did not pre-plan and there's not advanced directives, so what are the family's options? Can they, are they committed to a traditional funeral at that point in time? No, they're, they're not committed to that. The, the family, uh, whoever is the closest family member next of kin, mm -hmm. it's really incumbent upon the family to take care of their loved ones. Um, uh, the mm -hmm. deceased mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so really their options are they're not obligated to any one particular thing like a funeral or a cremation it's really the family's decision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as to as to the final disposition uh, but and, and that is kind of sad because we do see that every now and then where there wasn't an advanced directive or somebody didn't make their wishes known there's something and, unexpected yes you know, like a car wreck or something yes, like that that's where, right where it kind of catches someone by surprise. Yes. We don't really plan for car wrecks. That's right. And, and so they can still choose to, about cremation. They can still choose cremation. Sure, absolutely, okay. yeah. And really, that's one of the burdens that pre-planning or pre-arranging avoids, yeah. right. this unexpected type yeah. of thing. So I hear, I hear uh, constantly, and, and so do many funeral directors, well, I'm too young to pre-plan my funeral. Mm -hmm. Well, the truth is, the time to really plan it or arrange it is when you are younger because something could happen. Right. Uh, and, and it relieves the burden gives early you, on. Gives you more control. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. So, yeah. so we, we would love to think that everybody would do that, but there are people that don't. That's right. right. And maybe the ex-wife or the ex-spouse comes in and says, well, he, I was always close to your father, you know, and he made put me in charge. Yes. Uh, and how does how do you handle disputes uh, for people who don't have anything, well, have anything in place? It's really does that not. Come up? It, all kinds of disputes come up around the arrangements table, and it's funeral directors have to be very careful about getting in the, mm -hmm. the middle of disputes because yeah. it's really not our position to do that. Our job isn't to weed out and, and come to a, a solution, it's to provide solutions and let the family decide what's most okay. appropriate in their situation. Okay. Now, sometimes there are some legal things that, that we can notify the family of if we have a power of attorney or durable yeah. power of attorney, uh, then that can, in a sense, trump uh, some folks that might feel like because of their lineage mm -hmm. that right. they have more authority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's not our job to enforce it, but right. it is our job to educate and make sure that everybody so at the table. So that's that's good information to know that you're not the or you're not the arbitrator. No, but you hopefully not. maybe you can do a little mediation. That's here, right. Perhaps, that's so. right. We're we're there really to mitigate uh, any of the complications and grief, not to add to it or feel like we need to be the the problem solver. Right. Really. And so just family conflict could be one source of problem, lack of pre-planning, lack of directives, but what about lack of funds? What do you do then? Lack of funds, thank goodness, in my uh, time as a funeral director, uh, I've always been able to encourage the family to reach out in a broad sense, kind of cast their nets uh, to the family at large, and they've been able to take care of it. There's several things that can happen in this scenario. Uh, one, uh, they can reach out to their family uh, two, they can choose a lesser expensive disposition because oftentimes right. it might be a family that wants a full burial. Mm -hmm. uh, they might say, well, mom or dad never wanted a cremation and they want a full funeral with, a, with a, an expensive casket involved. Yeah. Uh, they may have to then uh, 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 scale back a little bit. Right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they have yeah. to choose the option of cremation as a, as a more affordable option for that family. Right. Yeah. Uh, or. The, the last and final decision is one that some funeral directors really just don't want to uh, have to deal with necessarily, but, but every now and then a funeral director has to dig into his heart a little bit and do a little pro bono and help families. Okay. And so right. from time yeah. to time, 
uh, I find myself in that position to do that. Okay, we're talking to John Smith today from the Smith Family Funeral Home. We're going to put your contact information up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, John, for being here. Thank you. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the times that a traditional funeral may not be what your family needs and look at some other options. Stay tuned.